we thank you today for such an opportunity that you've granted us once again to come in together together. We gather here, our Father, that we might have a word from you. Our hearts are open, desirous to receive from you that which you have designed for us. And so we thank you for that. Our desire is to move forward and to fulfill the purpose and calling that you've placed in us and to do the work that you have set to our hands to do. I thank you for every person that's gathered together here and for the desire that you have placed in each heart to fulfill the calling that you've given unto them. And we shall move forward and be what you've called us to be and to do what you call us to do. And your will be done in the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated if you will. Uh, good morning to all and good morning to our viewing audience. God bless you. Thank you so much for your commitment to the kingdom of God and for all that uh, you are doing to carry out the plans of God that he has given unto you. Well, how are we doing? Praise God. Well, we, I have decided I'm going to run this thing through. Uh, that, there's no need of quitting now. <laughs> we've come too far to turn back. We've come too far. We've come too far to turn back, and we have just. I'm. I'm excited. I'm really. I'm really excited about this journey that we are on, and and all that uh, God is revealing to us in this hour. Uh, it's just going to get better. Your understanding is going to just increase more and more and more. Now, we've been talking about, you know, uh, you know, separating ourselves from this world. The title of it that we have is Debt to the World, uh, how to understand the kingdom of God and how God has delivered us out of darkness and has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And so we're looking at the reality of that and, and just the practicality of, of understanding what that all means. And so let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and we'll let the... <coughs> I've learned to, to just go to God's Word, anything that I want to find out, you know, and get it right, just go to the Word. And the Word will always let you know. Now, now, doing it is a whole different ball game. Yes. Notice God tells us, he said, be what? Doers of the word, not hearers only. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so that, that's important. It's important for us to, to when we, you know, the mind, your mind can work against you sometime. And you can sometimes have preconceived ideas of how the kingdom is supposed to be. And that's not right. I tell you what. Don't do that. Just go into the Word and let, let, let the Word of God tell you. And then, you know, as, as outlandish as it may sound sometime, if God says it, just, just say amen. amen. He'll show you what he's talking about. Amen. But uh, one, of the, one of the things I think that we have done unintentionally is God will speak to us. It will sound so outlandish. We'll say, well, he don't really mean that. You ever heard people say things like that? Well, God don't really mean that. Well, you know what we're doing? We're trying to pull the word down to mind size. You know, for an example, a scripture like uh, he say, Say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe in those things which he said. He'll have what he said. So, well, God don't really mean a real mountain. Well, that's what he said, didn't he? He said, if you say to the mountain, and it, well, he don't really mean a literal mountain. Well, you see how we just try to trim all of the faith off the word, <laughs> trim all the faith off it, and bring it down to mind size. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Just take God at his word and trust him to reveal the truth of what he is saying to you. Rather than to, you know, make the mistake of, 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 of whittling all of the faith. See, we take, and we do it, and we're all guilty of that. We trim all the faith off the word and then, you know, bring it down to, to earth size where we can handle it. No, no, we're talking about two different kingdoms here. 
So let's go to the Word of God and let God talk to us. And, you know, it'll, 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 it'll make you mad or glad, one or the other. <laughs> Galatians chapter 2. And let's look at the 20th verse there. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So what's with this I have been, what do you mean I have been crucified? I've been crucified with Christ. There, the Bible says over in 2 Corinthians that, you know, if any man be in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed, have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And here he says, well, well, I've been crucified with Christ. Now, you have to, 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 to really grasp that. Uh, you got to understand what Christ did for us and understand that he was crucified for us and that he, he took to take away our sins. And so, so, what's, so what's with that? You, you have to really, really go there and understand what, what, is, what does it mean? What is being crucified? Well, in our culture, we don't even know. We've got to go to the Word of God. That's why I say always go to the Word of God. Don't, don't, don't read something and then try to reason it out. Just go to the Word of God. Well, if you go over to the 22nd Psalm and you read that and you'll see, a, a, you'll see the details of the crucifixion. Well, and then you read that, and then you said, then you go back and you read this verse, said, I've been crucified, and he said, no, I don't like that. No, I don't want to do that. Well, let's let, 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 let God do the talking. You're going to always find, if you will just say amen to what God says, and, 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 and then you, you, what you do When you say amen to what God says, you position yourself to understand what God is saying. But if you if you if you listen to the word of if you hear God speak and then you instantly make a decision on what you hear without listening to what God has to say, you'll miss God. Listen to what He is saying. He writes it, Paul writing here to the church, to the church yet at Galatia. I, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. So we go back and we read that 22nd Psalm. You can't read that and don't know what it means. You can't read it and not say, I know, you know, you, 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 when you read that 20, there's a detail layout of what Jesus encountered at the crucifixion. Now, I have been crucified with Christ. What, what is he saying there? It, I, I identify. When you go back and you read the 22nd Psalm, you begin to identify with that crucifixion. Now, it's the mystery of salvation is wonderful. God did not require each of us to hang on the cross with nails in our hands. He didn't require us to do that. But Jesus is the one that did that. And he did it for us. Our appreciation for what he has done for us allows for us to be able to identify with that. So you can say, when Christ died, I died. When Christ was buried, I was buried. When Christ was raised, I was raised. Now, this is very, this is brought out clearly in the sixth chapter of Romans. If you look at Romans chapter 6, 
If you look at Romans chapter 6 here, and you look at the fourth verse, therefore we were buried with him through baptism. Anybody in here been baptized? You ought to have been. I have been. I was. If you haven't, you let me know and I'll dunk you. No, you need to be. That's what Christians do. We believe, we believe and we are baptized. You know, some, some people have a problem with that. I don't know why. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now, here is a text here that I just definitely identify us with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and submit to water baptism, then this 20th verse of Galatians 2 comes into play. Can you see that? <coughs> when I was buried in by baptism, I remember I remembered my distinctly in my water baptism. It was on a Sunday morning in North Carolina in a big old lake in a pasture, cow pasture, if you will. And I was baptized in water. My baptism is a picture of Christ being buried. Notice what the scripture says in, in, in this verse here. Therefore, we were buried with him. Now, now, think about you've been to a burial. You've been to a funeral, right? Did you ever notice we never buried anybody that's alive? I never. You bury, anything that you bury is dead. You don't bury anything that's alive. We were buried with him through baptism. So when I was baptized, is a picture of burying. So here again, if you don't only bury something that's dead. So I have to have died. I died. Well, what do you mean you died? What are you doing sitting up there then? No, I died to this world. I'm proving that by submitting to what a baptism. Christ died literally on the cross. I identify with him by submitting to water baptism, saying, Christ, you died, I died. No, look at it now. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism unto death. So, so if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if anything that you bury is dead, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, See, notice that. Now, I baptize many people. I never leave them down there. I always bring them back up. I bury them, and then I bring them back up. Notice, look at, look at that verse there. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised up, so Christ was buried, right, but he did not stay buried. What happened three days later? He was raised up. So when I bury people by baptism, I also raise them back up. So when I bury them, there is an indication of the identification with Christ, dying with him, being buried, and then when I raise them up, it is a, it's a reflection of Christ being raised up from the dead. But when I'm raised up, I'm not the same one that I was buried. I'm raised up to do what? Walk in what? Newness. It's a new life. You see what? You see, can you see that? It's a new life. So 
back to our text. I have been crucified with Christ. And so I died. I can prove that because I was buried. I have a record of it. I was buried. <coughs> then I was raised up. I'm raised up to, to walk in newness of life. I'm not the same. The guy that's living now is not the one that was buried. Now look at our text. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Stop. Right now, I'm walking around alive, but I'm not alive. I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not the old Owen. It's a new guy. God, this is the picture. This is a picture of all of the children of God being buried with Christ, identifying with Christ, because Jesus, the Christ, is our salvation. He is a, and our safety place, safe place is in Christ Jesus. That is the only safe place that is on this planet now. The only safe place on this planet is in Christ. If you are not in Christ, you, you are in danger. You are in danger because you are out here in an environment where Satan is God over the system. Now, I don't know who would want to live under his authority. That's why God is encouraging us here in this text. I have been telling you, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I don't live in this world out of Christ. I would, I'm telling you, it's dangerous. It is utterly dangerous. I would not want to live in this environment outside of Jesus Christ. I'm just being straight with you. I wouldn't want that. I would not want to live here outside of Jesus. I, if I'm not in Christ, I mean, can you imagine 30,000 feet in the air and, and, and all by yourself, no, no airplane, no nothing? How long do you think you'd last? The next time you take a flight, next time you fly somewhere, just tell the pilot at 30,000 feet, tell him to let you out. <laughs> now, you're okay as long as you're inside that airplane. You, just, you can just sit in there and go to sleep if you want to. But step outside, just step outside the door. Why would you want to be that high in the air outside of the airplane? It is the same thing, dear Lord Jesus, or worse, being on this earth, not being in Christ. Why would you want to do that? But do you know if you don't know any better, you'll step right out the door and this system will eat you up. It will consume you. I, wouldn't want, I, do, I do not want to live. I do not want to live on this earth out of Jesus. I don't want it. I, 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 no, no, no. You can't trust nothing because Satan is the guard over this system. Now, now you see why that verse is there, why that 20 verse is there. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. The guy that lived before I was crucified is dead. But Christ lives where? In me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Now listen to me. I'm st I still got this thing here. I still got this anvil. I'm dragging this thing around. It's, uh, it is almost a pain in the side, but you got to carry it. You got to, you, you know, if you're going to stay on the earth, you got to have the thing. You, you, you got to have it. You know, I, I, I don't care how bad you don't like the airline. You, you better stay inside while you're up there 30,000 feet. 
whether you like it or not. You better stay inside. You have to, you have, to have this. Like it or not, whether it's got the headache, foot ache, toe, toe ache, don't make no difference. It's your, that's, that's your only safe place. You better stay in there. Because if you come out, you got to leave. If you come out, if you come outside of this, you got to leave. But watch this. You can stay here on the earth and stay inside of this as long as you live unto Christ. Can you receive that? See, look at that. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I don't, the, but, but Christ lives where? In me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I'm still in the flesh. I live by faith. Ah, there it is. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What's with that? Well, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. What is that? What is living by faith in the Son of God? Living by faith in the Son of God, I live at the God level. How is the God level? The God level is, 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 the, is, is, is living out of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here, and I am in the kingdom of God. Now, remember we talked about the kingdom of God that has come on earth. When Jesus came to the earth, he said, you know what I mean, the disciples said, teach us to pray. And here's what he taught them. Here's the message. Here's the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. He says, he says pray this. He said, ask the Father, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus said, pray that the kingdom of God come to the earth. Pray that God's world, the world that God lives in, that comes to, it's the kingdom, it's called the kingdom of God. Now, after Jesus had taught the people how to pray, then one day the Pharisees came to him and asked him, when is it going to get here? We've been praying that the kingdom come. When is it going to get here? Now, watch this. Listen at the answer that Jesus gave them. Verse 20 of, 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 of Luke 17, NLT. One day the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. Look at the next verse. You won't be able to say, here it is, or it's over there. For the kingdom of God is already among you. Now, I can see them when, right now. I can see them looking around. Where? Where? Where is the kingdom? Okay, back to, back to, back to Galatians 2.20. 2, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, watch this, watch this, I live by faith in the Son of God. Wait a minute. I live by faith. The life that I now live, I live by faith. You can, let me say it this way. The life that I now live, I live it in the kingdom because I'm now in the kingdom of God. Now, the brain goes ballistic. It can't handle that. What are you talking about? That's why, that's why we lose every, that's why you lose the world at. That's why you lose them at. The kingdom of God, listen, is God's world. That's where God lives. The kingdom of God is superior to the earth kingdom. It's not made of the same things as it's made of. 
to the natural eye, the kingdom of God, and everything about it is totally invisible to the natural eye. That's why Jesus said, uh, you want to know when the kingdom is coming? Uh, it's already here. You can't see it, though. But yet it is greater. It is superior. This natural world cannot hold a light for God's world. It is superior to this natural world. The spirit world, God's world, or we can use the, can use the term kingdom, the natural world was made by that world. The things that are seen were made by things that are not seen. Remember reading that? Now your brain really goes ballistic. How can this be? Doesn't that sound like, remember we got Nicodemus? Yeah, I'm talking about. The things of God is foreign to the natural man. Over in Corinthians, the Bible says, the natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit of God because to the natural mind, it's just flat foolishness. Right, because you don't understand it. The spirit world, God's world, the kingdom is totally superior to this natural world. Now, we have been privileged, oh, God, this is absolutely good. We have been privileged to get born again. Born into God's world. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word so that you may grow up in God's world, and the more you grow, the more you're going to understand it. You see how it works. So look at the look at the look at look at the complexity of this thing. Here I am, a natural man on the earth. Jesus comes down from the heaven out of another world and comes into this world, and he offers himself as a sacrifice to pay for my sin. All I got to do is to believe in him and I get born again into God's world. I get to grow up over there. I learn the lingo of God. I understand the power that goes with me as being over there. I take that power while I am still living on this earth and come over here and operate supernaturally on the earth using that power. Every, when I say to the sick, in the name of Jesus, be healed, I'm living by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And the world stands by and says, what did you say? They haven't a clue. We have access to something that the world only dreams. Now, do you understand why we are dead? Why you should want to be dead to this world? Why? <laughs> why would you want to give up that to stay down here in this? It ain't, it ain't nothing fair about it. Ain't nothing fair about it. They, they, they charge you too much for everything, and, and they, they, they just and they tell you one thing and do another. Nothing. You, nothing is right already. it. <coughs> Why would you want to do this? Now look at our text. Now let's go back and look at our text. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. 
and the life which I now, that's present right now. This, this is me. This is me right now. The life which I now live, I live by faith. Wait a minute. You live by what? I live by, I live like the same way that Jesus lives because I'm in him. I live by faith. Faith, living by faith is living by the dictates of your mouth. That's why Jesus said, say to the mountain. That's living by faith. When I say in the name of Jesus, devil, come out. That's living by faith. That's living at the God level. What things soever I desire when I pray, I believe I receive them and I have them. That's living by faith. Now, let me ask you a question. Good question. Remember when Jesus was ministering to the people, and there was a bunch over there that was hungry and had no lunch. Nobody had lunch. They all hungry. And, of course, Jesus said, well, well, well you know, what, what do you got? He said, well, we got a couple of fish here and maybe there's nothing. He said, tell them to sit down. And he sat down. And then he fed them. Now, I have a question for you. Where did that food come from? Because it's not a, this, 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 that's not fake. It's no fake food. It's real food because they ate and got full. These are human beings. These are human people, and they ate and got full. Where did it come from? You, you, you're 100% right. But w- watch this. Here's, here's, what, here's, how I want you to, I want, here's what I want you to see and understand. When you are operating at, out of the kingdom of God, when you're operating at the kingdom level, that, that world is totally superior to this world. That world is the same one that everything in this world came out of. The same thing the earth came out of, the same thing the ocean came out of. The ocean came out of that world. The stars came out of that world. The, the, the trees, all that came out of that world. How, okay, how did it come out? How did, what was, what's the trigger? What is the trigger to transfer something from God's world over into this world? There is a trigger. There's a switch somewhere that you can turn a switch. You can switch it and you'll transfer from, from the kingdom of God or from God's world over into this sea, touch, and fear world. There's, where did that switch? The switch is your faith. The life that I now live, I live by. In the, which, gives, which I have the power, I have the authority to transfer. <laughs> when God made the animals, where did they come from? They come out of the unseen world. They come out of his world and came and went, and then over here in this world. He said, light be. How did he get it there? He, with words. With words, he's spoken. He spoke them. He said, fish, fill the ocean. Yeah. The fish come out of that word. You, you, you understand this? This is the best I can explain it to you. But that is exactly what happened. It's the, when Jesus told those people to sit down, he transferred the food from over there over here. When you speak to the sick, when you speak to anything and make a command, it leaves that world and it comes over here to this world where it can be seen. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son. I live by faith 
I live. <laughs> That's why I have what I want. How do I get it? I see it. Now you see why. Now you see why God said, "Now death and life is in the power of the tongue." If you, <coughs> if you are not born again and you don't know these things, you can do yourself more harm than good. And we did it for a long time. We we destroyed ourselves a long time before we started building ourselves up. Remember when you used to talk? Remember when you used to talk all that crazy talk? You know how you're dying to go feet killing you and all of that. You was killing yourself. You were so killing yourself with your own mouth. Didn't know it though, but you got born again. And then your feet quit killing you because you shut your mouth. <laughs> this is real. This is real. This is now don't you see why? Now don't you see how detrimental it is when you allow your mouth to go out of control? Jesus told us about the tongue and the power of the tongue and that thing, what that thing could do to you, what it could cause you to live or die. And ignorance most of the time will kill us when we don't know any better. Because the most powerful thing you got is that tongue. It's the thing that transfers you into the kingdom. If thou shalt confess with thy, who Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God, you shall be, dear, that is a supernatural transaction. And it happened by your, wow. Now you see how the multitudes was fed. Now you see how all of the super, what the, all of the supernatural things that takes place, how it happened. It, nothing, it wasn't zapping. It was, a, it was a formula. God said it, and so it is. Then we are created in his image after his likeness, and he has invited us and made us what? Sons. The sons has the same DNA as the father. Now you say to the, oh, Jesus, that's good. Hallelujah. Now you say now you see why a Christian walking around, pole-mouthing and sad is so out of character. Is an indication that you haven't a clue of who you are. Wow. Now you're going to have to learn these principles and develop and start practice walking in them. Because see, you lived over there in that sea, touch and feel world so long, you thought that was all it was. But now that you got born again and is now introduced back to the Father, you see who you really are. Now, let's get started with this. <laughs> How? Because this, this, listen, listen, if we, don't, if we don't make this practical, if we don't just do something about this, nothing is going to change in your life. When I, when I hear the truth, I, I'm ready to do something about it because I want to, I want to change. Now, how attractive is this world to you? That's a good question. Because this world can keep you in bondage or you can forget about it and elevate to the next world and live over the whole system. How attractive is this world to you? Now, the devil, his strategies is to make the world so attractive to you that you will never see another one. You will spend all of your time trying to access this one rather than forgetting about it, going after the other world. That's the devil's primary strategy. And he does it more than you think. And much of the present day church is locked into that. We are so, we are so world oriented. We are so locked into this thing. We, that's all we see. And have no desire to reach out and to move over into the kingdom of God, which is right here, present. It's invisible, but you've got to seek it. You've got to go after that. You've got to go after that. Now, being crucified with Christ is the thing that qualifies you to access that world. But do you know the trick of the devil? Do you know what most, and I'm being honest with you. I, I know I've been there. Did you know the goal of most Christians is just simply to go to heaven when they die? We won't, now, we, don't, we won't admit that. 
but our actions prove it. The, to, to us, only, only thing the kingdom of God is, is I don't want to go to hell. I'm telling you, that's, that's, but children, that's not it. That's really not it. That, that, that's really not it. God wants us now to access. Why would he give us access now while we are on the earth to access his kingdom if he didn't want us over there? But you're going to qualify to go. You're not, fools ain't going. I'm telling you right now. Fools not going over there because fools can't be trusted with the, with the, with the power of God. No, 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 no. You, you don't give a child a 357 Magnum and, and turn him loose two year old. No, no, he killed somebody. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you are not gonna access that kingdom with a with a wild, crazy mouth. It, it's too dangerous. It's it's too dangerous. You that you that your mouth is like a bell clap, you know, you fly off the hinges at the drop of a hat. And he's gonna trust you. You you tap the whole you tap everything. No, no, no. In order for you to access the kingdom of God and operate there, you're going to qualify. You're going to qualify. It's not going to happen. I'll tell you that right now because I'm telling you, God is not going to fix this mess anymore. He fixed it this time. He, he ain't going through this no more. I'm telling you that right now. Number one, there is no more redeemer. Jesus is the only, son of, only begotten Son of God. Why do you think the Bible says he's the only begotten Son of God? So there's nobody else to, to, to there's, there's, no other, there's no other sacrifice. So, so, so he can't fix it again. He fixed it once and for all. And you're going to come into the kingdom of God according to the standard that God has called us to do, or you're not coming. And if your love for this world is greater than your love for the kingdom of God, I'm telling you, you are not going to make it. It's not going to happen. So the question is, how attractive is this world? I remember when we were growing up, my, mom, my mother used to say this to us, and, and I, didn't, I didn't know exactly what she was talking about. And she's, here's what she used to say to us. She said, she said I'm telling you, kids, I'm telling you something, children. The devil paints a pretty picture. And I didn't know what she was talking about. What do you mean the devil paints a pretty picture? He tried to make this world attractive to you. And then he, the way he, and then he feed the world to you, like, you ever hear the old, how the, 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 you tie the carrot in front of the horse, and the horse will never catch the carrot, but he's always trying. You ever see the picture of a dog chasing his tail? He never catch it, but it looks looks attractive. It looks like the next track he's going to get it, and he just chase it, and he just get dizzy and fall out. He can't he can't catch it. He don't know he's the fastest. He run the fastest tail gonna run. Well, that's the way the devil is. Many people, or should I? I could, I could almost be safe to say most people, is like a dog chasing his tail. They are out there in this system trying to make ends meet, and they won't meet. They're not gonna. But they look like they're gonna meet. Did you know it's been proven? Uh the spirit of a gambler. Gamblers always die broke, you know. No, no, just making money one time, don't, don't, don't he won't, he'll, he'll give it all, he'll, he'll sit there, he'll make all of them, and it's proven, it's a fact. He'll sit there and win, and then sit there and give it right back to him. Now, I don't know if anybody, any of y'all ever, 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 ever was in, in that. Now, I never had the gambling thing. I don't even know how. I did a lot of other crazy stuff that didn't make no sense, but the gambling part it never, never got me because I never learned how. I did try to, I tried to, when I was in the military, I was, <laughs> I was trying to shoot craps. You know, I didn't know anything about shooting no craps. I was raised on a farm. I didn't know about shooting. And the boys were teaching me how to shoot, and I was shooting craps. And they, you, over here, you over here what they call beginner's luck. Man, I whooped everything. I, I stood everybody against the wall. I said, wow, this ain't bad. <laughs> and then next payday, the soldiers, they always gamble on payday. That's the way they are. And then the next payday, I'm going to go mop up again. Man, they, <laughs> they took everything. <laughs> I 
alcoholic. I hardly come up with my shirt on. I said, boy, I can't do this. <laughs> but my point is that the devil always makes things look glamorous to you, but there's no victory in it. And that's the way he keeps the Christians attached to this system. And we are so attached to this world system that we do not have time to give ourselves to seeking God to develop and grow into his kingdom. And I'm just I'm telling on all of us. And if we keep doing that, you're going to pay the you're going to pay the price. God says, come unto me. He says, come out from among them. Why is he telling me that? Because you can't learn of me over there among them. You're going to be controlled by what you see. You're going to be controlled by the system. And the devil is going to manipulate you. And I'm telling you, he does it. He does it to the Christians. He does it to the Christians. I remember, I remember during the early, going back maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, <clears throat> during the, the charismatic renewal. And we found out about faith. And then at the same time, we found out, we found the word prosperity in the Bible too, you know, which is there. It's fine. And we thought that was it. Oh, man, you go, I'm going to my faith working now. I got, you know, God wants me to prosper. I'm going I'm to prosper. I'm going to show you how to do this. And here I'm, I'm, I'm got my bling bling. Everybody blinging. Everybody bling. Everybody so bright you can't even see. Bling, 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 bling. The, the, see, the devil is a trick. He was tricking me. He was tricking us. And I'm like, wow, wow. Everybody's a big shot. Everybody's a big shot. I mean, preachers and I didn't want to lead the, lead, lead, the preacher was leading the crowd. I, I, I listen, I've seen it. I've, I've, I lived through this and I've seen it. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen it. All of that was the devil using the world to attract our attention to keep us away from the kingdom of God. And God says, I want you to tell the people to examine themselves and ask them, how attractive is this world to you? Is this world so attractive to you that you can't see God? If so, you got a problem. You're going to have to allow God you're going to have to, see, don't you try to, and I, and I have to learn. This is what I have to learn. I have to learn. See, things don't make you. And, but, and there's so, and there's so, but, but, but there, there's so many things that's necessary and that's needed. But, the, but none of them make you. God taught me, he says, you get your eyes on me. I'll take care of the rest. If we can learn how to get our eyes on Jesus, don't worry about one, don't worry one way or the other what, about the stuff. He will take care of that, and it will always be in its proper place, and it will be used. You will always own it, and nothing will ever own you if it's done the God way. But the trick of the devil is to keep our focus, keep us so focused on this world system that we don't see God. And that is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Now, look at look at 2 Timothy here. And I want, I want to show you a picture of this. We have, we have this right here in the scriptures. Paul, Paul, you know, who was the greatest, one of the greatest ministers was, was the apostle Paul, right? Let's look at let's look at when Paul as Paul comes to the close of his ministry, and you know he he went through something. He he went through a lot. He he went through a lot. You you know that. We see his ministry throughout the book of Acts. But as he as he comes to the close of his, close of his ministry, let's pick up at verse six of of Second Timothy four. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good eulogy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. 
I have kept the faith. Notice what he says, I've kept the what? Faith. That's what you always want to do. You want to keep the faith. You want to maintain your position, your faith platform. Listen to me real carefully. You need this. Your faith platform is your position in the new kingdom of God. Your faith platform. If you have a, you have a solid faith platform, that's your dwelling place in the kingdom. Don't please re remember that. It's, it's a place. It's your place in the kingdom should be a faith platform. He says, I have kept the faith. <clears throat> now notice here. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Not to me only, but to also, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Verse 9 says, be diligent to come to me quickly. Now watch this. Now, these are, these are ministry partners of Paul, people in the ministry with him. He said, for Demas has forsaken me, watch this, having loved this present world. You see that? Don't read over that. Here is a, here is a, now, do, do you see the, now go back and look, we'll go back and walk through the ministry of Paul and you see the mighty works that's being done. You would think, how can anyone be in ministry with him and end up falling in love with the world more than the things of God? You see what I'm saying? He is around when all of these, when Paul is doing all of these great things. Raising the dead, healing the sick. And Demas has forsaken me, why? Having loved this present world. I'm telling you, you don't, this thing is attractive if you don't see Jesus first. It will trick you. He talked about Demas. He says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for uh, uh, Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark. Bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Tychicus, Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I've left with coppers at Troas. When you come, the books, especially the parchments. Now watch this. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much harm. So you, you, you think that you would think that all of these people would have been would have been excited about the things of God because you see all of the powerful stuff that's going on. Well, there's powerful stuff that's going on right now, and people are still in love with this world. Christians are in love with this world rather than the things of God. I'm trying to show you it, that it's, it's that way. It, you, 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 it's, it's happening. He said, Alexander, Alexander the coppersmith, he did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of him. For he has greatly misregistered, he has greatly resisted our work. In my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. I'm trying to show you what this world will do to you and the thing that the devil will do working in people to mess you up. Don't let it happen to you. It's always been that way. And God wants you and I to be cautious not to allow the things of this world to attract us and get us out of sorts. Listen, <clears throat> this world is not your home. You know, we, we, we talk about it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we just like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is nothing in comparison to what God has designed for you. <clears throat> I'll be perfectly honest, and I, can, I, can, I, I share my testimony. And, and you, you, if you stay, you stay on this track. You're gonna, hear, you're gonna, you're gonna begin to experience what I'm, what I'm about to tell you. You know, the the older I get, the less attractive this this, this world becomes to me. It does. I'm, I'm being honest with you. It, it it's not, I, it, it's nothing. You, you can't excite, you can't excite me. You can't, you can't get me excited over this world. I, I've been here too long. 
You understand what we're saying here? That's all God is saying to us. He is saying, don't allow the devil to use this age-old junk, a beat-up, run-down system that ain't nothing fair about it. It is just as crooked as a snake. I mean, it is nothing. I, I look at it. I, I, don't, I'm, I really look at it. I don't know how the thing stay afloat. I really don't. It is just as, and, 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 I, and I'm talking about from the White House all the way down. Amen. Amen. I, I, look, I listen to the, look at the stuff that is posted as, as supposed to be news, and I'm like, <clears throat> these people sound like two-year-old kids playing on the playhouse. Honestly, I, something, something uh, I don't know. Maybe, 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 I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe just me. I mean, it's something like commercials. That, that, that's, that's, that's so stupid. Why? It is, these are grown people. They're so stupid. And you know, I don't know. I, and I don't say nothing. I just, I, just, I just shake my head. I said, that's this world. And these people, they think they're son. That's, that's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. And everybody excited about nothing. You will only get like that when you draw near to God. When you're living with God, that's when the, it, it, it's just, it's worthless. It's nothing. It's a big joke. You know, the, our whole advertising industry is like, is such a joke. And I said, do you expect people to believe you and follow you and do that? Well, I tell you, I got news for you. If they are not in God's kingdom, they will be caught up in that whirlwind. I'm telling you. You can't, you know what I mean. So, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. When I live by faith, I'm living in the kingdom of God, operating at faith level, which has the ability to transfer anything from God's world over into this world. That's what your faith, that's what living by faith will do. When you command health, what you are doing, you are just simply using your mouth to transfer it from there over to here. When Jesus stood up on the boat, when he said, peace, be still, he transferred a calm day over and replaced a turbulence day with his mouth. That's the authority of the kingdom. And you can live the same way, operating in the same authority. Why do you think Jesus was so adamant in telling us, I now give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions? Well, what's with, serp what's with that? Because the serpents and the scorpions are the one that designed this mess. So I'm giving you authority over them. So when you stand up and speak, devils will shut up. You remember those sons of Siva that tried to cast out devils? Remember how the devil said, I, 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 I don't know who Jesus is. I, I know. I, I, I know who Paul is. I know who Paul is. But he ain't scared of you. You see what I mean? You, you better live your life until you get to tell the devil to shake when he call your name. When somebody call your name, you better live so, you, so the devil be shaking. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I know, I, I, I know Lucille. You, you see what I mean? But, but, you got to, but you've got to develop that. You've got to walk in that authority. Don't, don't you see? See, when, see when, when <clears throat> you won't deal. See, you, you see, the, you see, notice the interaction. And it ain't much that you see the devil talking to Jesus. 
But I can assure you he was at his, he was at a safe distance. I can assure you of that. He wasn't going to get in Jesus' face. I can assure you of that. And I got some news for you. He's not going to get in your face. See, see, see the wrong, see the problem has been in, in the church, and I'm telling you something. The wrong one is scared. The, the, the devil's supposed to be this one that's scared, not you. And I've seen, I've seen it in reverse in too many times. I've seen the Christians is the scared one. And that, 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 I, get, I get spiritually indignant when I see that. I, boy, I get mad. Spiritually indignant. When I see Christians afraid of the devil. I said, what's wrong with you? Oh, we're afraid of what the devil going to do to them. Everything that's negative is of the devil. And I'm not running from no devil. But you got to develop to that. I can't, you can't talk anybody into not being scared. <laughs> I've tried it. You cannot talk people into not being scared. But you can develop and grow into not being scared. And when you understand who you are, when you die to this world, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live. That's now. That's every time I read that, it's now. Every time I read that, it's right now. The life that I right now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I identify with his death, his burial, and I walk in his resurrection. That's my choice. And nobody can take that from me. It's available for whosoever will. I encourage you to rise up, take your place, and let's walk this thing out. Well, we're done. Glory to God. Father, we so thank you today for your grace. Your grace is more than enough. It is sufficient to sustain and to keep us, for we have been raised up to walk in newness of life. Your word, so God, is in our mouth and in our hearts. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if any confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so, Father, I thank you today for such visitation of your presence. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for the visitation of your presence, of your manifest presence to transform and to change us, conforming us more and more to the image of Jesus. To you be the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yay. Hallelujah. Well, bless God, let's go do it. Hallelujah.